from, I think, only one game. Everyone does seem to know here in professional play and in a, a more conventional tournament that, yes, Ivern is a very strong jungler, that what he brings to the table is worth bringing out. And I would agree, 623 is especially a strong Ivern patch. Nice to see a Kennen ban out as well. We weren't really seeing any thoughts to him until sort of later on in day one, but uh, actually a very strong champion. And, and the real interesting thing is, I want to know how many other carry top laners these teams have prepared. Because yeah. like the first five games was like Poppy Maokai, Poppy Maokai, Poppy Maokai. Then we saw a little bit of Poppy Nautilus, then we saw a little bit of Kennen now. And I want to see how much sort of wider that champion will get stretched. I think it's safe to assume that Jace is somewhere in there for both of these guys. But, but you know, does it go beyond that pool? Uh, you know, is there right. something else in their pocket that they could pull out? Um, that's yet to be seen, really. But uh, yeah. continuing, of course, Cinder and LeBlanc have to be taken off the board here. Uh, they're just too powerful. Unless you know the counterfeit. We had seen Echo do pretty well in the matchup to Syndra. That's true. We'd seen Vladimir lose, we'd seen Ryze lose, but Echo seemed okay. But if you don't have the champion ready, then you've got to set the band into it. Uh, and yeah, you mentioned sort of what other carry top runners are there, like Jace. I kind of wish we were on 624 because Fiora and um, Kled actually were big beneficiaries of the fervor of battle buffs at 624. And I think we could have seen him in the top lane if we were on that patch. Sadly, we are not. Final bands come through, two jungles off the table, which means Rek'Sai is clearly looking like the queen of the jungle here. Yeah, it seems like that's going to be a really safe uh, first pick up here. The Rengar band, a lot of respect being shown right there to Rain over having that one off the board. But a lot of different options. I mean, Teal, they could go for something a little bit safer if they wanted to draft something like the Karma, of course. Uh, really good pick with Piglet, so you can just keep oh. the AD carry safe. But uh, it's actually going to be the Nautilus, so showing a lot of priority to that in the top lane. That's actually very I mean, it could unusual. be a flex pick, but sure. more yeah, than likely it, in the top lane. It's definitely most likely to be in the top lane. It's just very interesting because normally we had before seeing that Poppy and Maokai were more highly sought after. And of course, with all three of those sort of trifecta tanks in the top lane available, it's always interesting that they wanted to first pick away Nautilus and say, no, we think this is actually the best. Other teams weren't even considering playing it at all. I just always find it very strange when teams very heavily divert from what they think is good compared to what other teams think is good. And again, this Rek'Sai being up means it has to be some kind of a bait that there's a counter pick ready or that Rainover thinks there's a much stronger champion available to him. Well, we know Rainover. He's got a, a pretty good champion pool, I think, when he's he's getting ready to come in. I mean, people call him, you know, what, the one trick Rek'Sai for a while there, sure. but uh, we know he's got more in his pocket than that. Ash is going to be locked in as well for upset and the AD carry position. Uh, and Piglet, of course, another one that can play pretty much any AD carry, so I'm sure he'll be very comfortable going into this matchup. Absolutely. It's almost kind of nice. I Generally speaking, I think there was some level of counterpicking available in the bottom lane, and, and for Liquid, I like this. Yeah, this, this looks really interesting, especially with Ash being a bit easier to prey upon. Uh, you know, immobile, okay, yes, she can stun you at point blank range, but Kha'Zix probably gets in there at some point. Uh, but I think there is some level of counterpicking available in the bottom lane, and letting Piglet make sure he sees a matchup and say, I can beat Ash with this champion, and he'd know better than I what the matchups are that he wants to go for. But I think that's actually kind of smart for Liquid to wait a little bit on Piglet's choices. See Olaf. Yeah. Oh well. Okay. okay. Olaf Karma. So we will have uh, the Olaf locked in there. Karma as well. Uh, and honestly, that could that could very well be a mid lane pick here for Golden Gloop. Uh, you yeah. know, very safe, reliable on the shield to keep yourself alive. But then also, as you get into those late game team fights, the big mantra speed up boost. Uh, you know, for the entire team as well as just, you know, big shield to throw on Piglet, uh, so he can just get into the enemy's face and take him out. Totally agree with you. I think Karma. Karma mid suits Liquid as a team the way I think Liquid will play kind of coming into the season having not been proven anything else, which is Piglet's going to be the star. He wants the resources. You could run four supports of Piglet. You'd probably win a lot of games that way. That would actually be reasonable to do. Uh, but we talk about Rainover not wanting to go for the Rek'Sai. Of course, Olaf, one of the champions that he himself popularized, he was really the hipster in that one and bringing it out before anyone else did. And it turned out he was right that uh, Cinderhulk uh, Olaf is definitely strong. Yeah, I mean, and another one, honestly, on the table that would still conform to TL's uh, expected play style would be Orianna in the mid lane. Sure. Uh, since the champion pool has been, you know, squeezed a little bit here, uh, with that little Blanc and Cinder taken off the table, could just see something like Orianna in for Golden Blue, and then just swap that Karma straight down in for Matt, and you have plenty of shields to go around. Totally agree. So Giants actually picking some very strong laners. They are gankable laners, to be fair. Zyra and Ash actually, their only peel is crowd control, and you've already picked Olaf into it. Rainover definitely can hard gank this lane, especially if he can power farm to six and really try to knock some people down. Piglet. Uh, oh, he's going to lock it in. Ooh, okay. Piglet says, you know what? I'm back in Korea. I'm back at OGN. Let's go straight for the classic. Yep. He's got his own skin. I hope Piglet uses it. That's going to be great. I get to watch 
Vein mechanics from Piglet. This feels good. Oh boy. Well, I just got a way more invested into this yeah. <laughs> into this best of one for sure. But Rise, let's talk about the Rise. Did come in, uh, so actually did make it through the draft. So Golden Glue will be rocking that one in the mid lane. So Karma confirmed for that vein in the bottom lane, and it's honestly that's going to be a very necessary pick to keep that vein alive and survive uh, through the lane. That Ash is going to be harassing with the volley with that just constant slow. Because uh, if he gets rooted by Zyra, it's going to be a uh, hell of a lot of pain coming in for him. Yes, absolutely. And it's going to be up to his mechanics, of course. Playing on land, he's got no ping. Shouldn't be a problem to tumble away from all this. It, you really got to expect that if if Piglet picked into this matchup, and actually he got to see the entire matchup when he picked the champion, he should, I mean, he knows jungler, he knows the entire volley, he even knows what top lane is going to TP into him. So Piglet has all the information he needs going into this matchup. He kind of gets to secure himself. He's going to be fine. And you expect that it's going to be good for him. Golden Blue in the mid lane, of course, with the rise, and Cassiopeia going to be the counter pick for Knight. And I, again, sort of looking at teams on paper and assuming what they're going to play like, I like carry style mid laners here for someone like Knight here. His Cassiopeia should work well in this. I think it's good in the matchup, specifically against Rise, and I think stylistically the champion will fit Giants well. All right, well, it's going to be some pressure on Rain over to make sure that Golden Glue doesn't get shoved in by this Cassiopeia in the mid lane, but like you said, very gankable bottom lane as he hits that level six mark. So we'll see what he can do to get Piglet ahead on his staple 80 carry. So this is going to be one hell of a game now. Yeah, I really like the Giants comp. I think it's very well rounded. There's a lot they can do. All right, well, let's go ahead and get ready to load up onto the rift for this best of one TL versus Giants. Winner will advance into the next match, a best of three to play against Kongdu Monster. And if they can make it past them, they'll be moving on to the Goyang Stadium this weekend. So a lot of pressure on these guys, Team Liquid especially with their first international showing, want to prove themselves. Golden Glue wants to prove themselves, and Piglet especially back in Korea wants to have a nice showing for the fans here in the audience. On his signature vein, no less. It's going to be very exciting for a lot of reasons here. Piglet, sadly, not using his own skin. It's Dragon Slayer vein. I'm sad. Aw, oh, well, that's a little bit disappointing, but let's go ahead and load up onto Summoner's Rift and get this game underway. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Here we are. TL versus Giants. TL coming in on the blue side. Giants on the red. Looks like we're just going to have a standard fan out across the map for the most part. So no shenanigans going on. Thought maybe we'd see something. We got a decent bit of a early CC here on the side of TL. What with the Rune oh, yeah. Prison and that dredge line from the Nautilus in the top lane. But looks like they're just going to have a little clump in the bottom lane. But otherwise... Not going for anything too cheeky. Piglet may be trying to bait Ash to follow, but yeah, as you mentioned, Liquid Level 1 is actually insane. We know Nautilus is great. He's got two forms of CC, almost regardless of what he picks up at Level 1. Uh, Matt's got his ultimate at Level 1, and and, and yeah, a, an Axe change from Rainover nearly guarantees a kill, but nothing cheeky done yet for Liquid. Instead, Piglet giving away a bunch of gold to Hustlin. <laughs> it's all right, they got a CS for Matt. Yeah, I mean, that, that's five gold versus 24, like... <laughs> I know it's not huge, I'm like over obsessing about little things, but like, I don't know, it's an interesting little mind game, right? Because Liquid wanted to get into that brush so that they could cheese their opponent's level one because they know Rainer was going to start top side. And so they said, okay, if we can take brush control, we can maybe hit you at level one and get some free damage in. But Hustle and Knight were already waiting, so they just got free damage on Piglet. So how do you think if Rainover is going to approach this one? Do you think he's just going to have to stick in the jungle till 6, or is he going to make some early visitations to some of these lanes? Uh, so I think bot lane's going to be too hard to gank just in the general sense. I feel like by the time he can gank Hustlin, Hustlin should have his root available and, you know, he needs to hit level 6. That said, if, if some of the lanes show up as gankful, if someone misplays the lane if they overpush, you can always be opportunistic, but I don't think there's any obvious ganks available early on. Uh, again, unless someone misplays and gives him the opening. And Mighty Bear on a similar uh, point. I think Liquid's going to be under their turret in the bot lane, and Golden Blue just... I don't think Rek'Sai Cast is going to make easy rise kills. So, uh, yeah, I feel like both these junglers are just going to have to play for vision and, and each other's jungle control for the early game. All right, so maybe no cheeky early ganks coming out from Mighty Bear then, as he'll hit that level 3 mark pretty soon here. Yep, and interestingly enough, Mighty Bear actually... Uh, very cheeky by him, so 
Uh, again, we're on 623. You can hit level 3 by doing red buff into Krugs. Instead, he went red buff into Raptors on a bot side. And Liquid with no deep wards, I think, normally would expect that Mighty Bear is still top side jungle right now, but he's actually way down here. This maybe means he can fight for bottom scuttle. Maybe means he can head off Olaf if he goes for an early gank, though that's sometimes unlikely. And Rainer, you can see, he's actually going for a very hard power farm route. He's actually delaying his red buff pickup and doing Krugs first. So, again, really trying to stay in the jungle a very long time. And delay the reds that he has it up for when he maybe tries to gank around level 4 or 5. Well, if they were expecting Mighty Bear to be hovering around the top side still, they spotted him out with that ward in the river brush, so okay. they'll have some eyes on him, know that he's probably heading over towards that Gromp at the moment. And now Rain over finish off those Krugs, go ahead and move for that red buff, and then maybe look to get a little bit of an early gank, but that might be wishful thinking. Uh, the CC in the bottom lane here, not going to be that reliable, I guess, is the tether from Matt, but you know, if Zyra lands those roots, then you're just going to get out of range. Yeah, the Crocodile's not amazing. You're pretty much just trying to hope that Rainover lands two axes. If he does, the champion's dead even with Flash Up. Uh, but what's really nice, actually, we saw a little uh, clip of it. Liquid's playing the bot lane really well. So normally you'd have said, okay, Ash, Zyra, they can push in. They have those plans. It's super annoying. And you're right to say all those things about the lane matchup. But what Piglet and Matt are doing is basically Piglet says, okay, I have Silverbolt's ready. Shield me. I'm going to auto, tumble, auto, and like just get a quick trade in and, and run away. And he just blocks all the damage with the Karma Shield. And so anytime Hustlin's Q is down, Piglet he knows he can win the trade, and he can kind of go in with uh, mantra, or not mantra, but just general shields and tumbles. So we see Mighty Bear hovering around in the brush here, but what with the lane being shoved up under the tower, doesn't want to push forward, so he's just going to go ahead and recall, get a little buy-in. Looks like Tracker's Knife going to be coming out for him as well as a control ward, so just wants to get some more permanent vision established, but this gives Rain over some time to get an invade going on. Takes away the Krugs in the top side of the map. Let's see what we got for ourselves here with Rainer. We're slinking around. Mighty Bear's not going to be here just yet. Hoping for the 2-1-2 oh, fight. Early goes up. Popped. Yeah, he gets, the, he gets the push back, though. Doesn't find the stun, but Rainover's just going to trade a little bit of damage and gets that final undertow. So he'll force out a couple more of those corrupting potion charges, but Rainover's going to have to peel back. Still has that W, of course, to heal himself up, so might not have to recall quite yet. Well, on the bottom lane, a lot of harass coming out. Piglet going really low. The plant's doing some good work here uh, for yep. the side of Giants. He's going to have to peel back and play it a bit more cautiously. Yeah. See, he's consumed that biscuit already, and Upset still has his. This actually really hurts Liquid. They, they chose to trade onto support onto Hustlin, and, and Piglet got hit by Plants and by Upset. So he just took a whole bunch of HP that Hustlin has three times the potion. It's much easier for Zyra to, to reach on her health than for Piglet here on this vein. So, you know, I, I didn't see how it started, but it clearly ended in the favor of Giants. Yeah. So have to be more conscious when it comes to uh, they want to approach those trades. No summoner spells used in that exchange, however. So both of those supports will still have their exhaust. So they didn't hit panic modes there for TL. They still knew that their limits, as well as giants, didn't want to overcommit for anything. But definitely does give them the upper hand. And this has helped Upset kind of keep the CS very close. Because for a while there, Pickle was starting to inch ahead. But now he's just within a couple CS. Yeah, it's pretty close. And of course, keep in mind, there's a couple of free CS coming in from knocking down Zyra plants as well. I don't know how many he got. That but is true, yeah. Individual gold-wise, it's within 10. So yep. they're basically landing identically. And Piglet's health is coming back up reasonably well. Pretty much everybody in the bot lane right now is running um, the Warlord's Bloodlust. He's got life soon hitting minions. And looks like his life is easy enough. Rain over, though. Going for a hard farming sort of build, you can see he's actually got the early uh, jungle refillable potion, so it constantly refills full HP all the time. He's a level over Mighty Bear, though, which means Mighty Bear really can't fight him in the jungle. He can maybe try to smite Steve, but that's it. We'll see if he wants to go for it. He does. He's going to tunnel over the wall, gets the pop up on Rainover. This might come down. Hustlin's roaming over as well. They oh, might want to go for this one. Actually, it's going to draw the teleport. Matt going in for the tether. Hustlin's going to flash over the wall, but he still gets locked down. Piglet going in. Getting proccing those silver bolts, trying to take out this Zyra. One more hit might do it. There it is. First blood comes through as Matt finds it, but Piglet goes down. And now Knight with a roam down from the mid lane is helping turn this completely on its head in favor of Giants. A two for two for so far. Oh, Almost makes me. it a three, but doesn't find it. They're going to go even in the end. Summoner spells blown across the board. And a TP down for Team Liquid. They go two for two in the end. Two for two, no kill for Piglet, only assists for him. I'm trying to figure out who really got the better of it. Yeah, more total gold went to Liquid, but the, the first blood actually went to Matt himself. So uh, gold not exactly optimally placed. Either way, though, really good by Knight. He was able to roam down first and five HP away from making that a three for two, which would have easily been Giant's favor. So we watched this, and I mean, look, you can look how aggressive Hustlin's playing. Really smart by him to use the lane advantage. Say Mighty Bear, I'll be here, but a really good, very aggressive turnaround by Liquid to them into the wall. Proper exhaust, of course, as well. And like Matt's being untouched here because they need to kill off Piglet really fast. And 
It allows Matt to get another shield off later on in this fight, lands the Q, and then it helps Rainover come down. And dies anyway, but... And then you can see right here, flash, and then just oh. not enough damage. Yep. Meanwhile, really close. Meanwhile, uh, yeah, there's uh, a dead Poppy. Flaxius has, uh, has died, Rainover, turning around and uh, just finding another gank real quick. So, goes ahead, puts one on the board, a second one on the board for him, and gets lower low in assists, since he wasn't involved in any of those kills down in the bottom lane. But we can see the TP back from Poppy. We'll give Lorlo the upper hand when it comes to the teleports in a bit. Yeah, it's true. In about three minutes, Lorlo can go for a big play. And that's going to be a really crucial timing because bot lanes are... Ooh! Oh, Piglet that's going to be the arrow coming out. Piglet getting locked down. Popped up in the air straight into the roots. There's nothing you can do. Beautifully chained CC coming in for Giants. And they find a kill. That's rough. A player as good as Piglet should not have missed that tumble. So you can yeah. see this top lane fight again, and it's... It's what looks like a good trade from Flaxus, right? He gets the shield on, gets plenty of damage, but guess what? He's being perma slow then. Just, you know, great chain of CC right there. Yep, right over just basically rolled up and kind of stole that one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he would have guaranteed got the kill if he wasn't there. You know, to, to Lorlo's The work credit, was done for him. The work was definitely done. All the hard part was on Lorlo's side. He did a really good job <laughs> with it. That's to be fair. No, all Flax Flax just, just has to be uh, a bit more cautious, I suppose. Never know when right is going to be lurking in the the shadows. Yeah. He pays for that one with his life, but I'm sure he's going to be playing considerably more uh, cautiously moving forward from here. He's got a uh, ward down the river, so he might spot him as he comes back this time around. But for now, gold pretty much dead even across the board. Three for three, no towers yet been a touch too much. Bottom lane got a little bit of damage uh, put into it, but we do have a pause. Yeah, so you mentioned the gold being pretty close in sort of the net value. I think the gold is better distributed, though, on the red side here on Giants. They've got a kill and two assists on that Ash, so uh, Upset's doing very well. He's personally up about 11 minions right there, whereas pretty much all the gold that's been acquired by Liquid is on their jungler. It's on the Olaf. And, you know, some of that gold is also the assist on a Nautilus. And those are two of the the worst people to have gold on. Keep in mind, there's a first blood on Matt. Like, those are yeah. those are your three worst gold recipients. Gold and Glue and Piglet are easily the two best, and those guys have no kills. Yeah, so, that's true. Uh, unlucky there, really not stuff you really want to have, and, and that's, uh, you know, a bit of a problem, to be honest. So, you know, meanwhile, right, a kill on Ash, a kill on uh, Cassiopeia in a much better spot. You know, really minor point, but it's a small differentiator that these guys have on the giant side, and also the fact that you know, Piglet went for a greedy lane matchup to say, look, Vayne is a very strong champion, and when we come into mid-game fights, he'll do really well. I trust that, that he can kind of make that play. He can outplay Poppy, he can outplay Ash, he can outplay Cassiopeia. All those things should be true for him. Um, even uh, the Rek'Sai, when, when she tunnels in, you just prime the Condemn, and you will never get you will never get knocked up with Rek'Sai unless she flashes on you. Yeah. Uh, so if Piglet can hold on a little bit better, I think by mid-game he'll be fine, but there is definitely a point of pressure here in the bot lane that unless Liquid uses their TP advantage in the next three minutes, we'll probably see Outer Turret go down in favor of giants in the bot lane. Yeah, not not seeing him, you know, evade that enchanted crystalline arrow is a little bit uh, that was questionable. You know, should have been able to get out of the way of that one, that but for sure. Uh, but you know, shake off the rust hasn't probably hasn't <laughs> played the uh, the vein in quite some time, as far as uh, you know, on a professional stage goes. So I just need to get back into the mindset. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this does put more pressure on Rainover, who so far has been hard farming really well over top of Mighty Bear and also has those two kills. Uh, currently, uh, you know, just under 20 CS up. Uh, but that puts a lot of pressure on him uh, to keep, you know, running down and ha having to disrupt that backline, get on top of Upset, make him burn the arrow, uh, and then you just just Ragnarok straight through. Absolutely. So we'll see what they can get for themselves here. It, it is kind of on Rainover to be the carry force right now. He's, he's the one person, like, really, really winning in his matchup, and... Generally speaking, wherever Rainover goes, it, it should be a, a good chance for a kill for Liquid. And that's kind of the play style they have to ab adopt right now because none of the rest of their matchups are really winning in any meaningful way. Yep. Well, Rainover going over to the Rome. He's going to find a couple plants. He'll clear those out, pick up a, a little bit of gold. But now, shoving off that bottom lane from the turret, they'll get some damage in. Oh, wow. Get that back. Golden Glue, he's on the Rome down as well. Could go ahead and ult the in if necessary, but looks like. All they might just go ahead and back off as a unit. Yeah, I had to respect the Cassipi roam down in general. And once the Rek'Sai from Mighty Bear finally roamed down, they realized, okay, it's at best of 4v4. Let's not do this right now. The thing is, it was a smart choice by Liquid to go for this play. They had TP advantage. If Giants chose to fight, and especially if Rek'Sai wasn't around, you've got a guaranteed 5v3. You win that fight, you get turret, you get a big TP advantage. And Liquid playing around, that's really good. Oh, it's a tumble again. off, but it's still going to get rooted. TP coming through from Lorlo. 
still gets popped up by the Strangle Thorns, but no one else is really there to damage him. Just the plants doing a little bit of work. Dredge line connects on the upset. Root comes through, and Lorlo, he's going to pick up another kill for TL. 4-3 on the board, and that gives him a very slight gold lead. That was catastrophically stupid. I just mentioned how good it is for Liquid to play towards the bot lane, and Giant says, oh, that bot lane tower that didn't work. Let's walk away from the turret real quick, overextends so that you can kill us for sure. Huge misplay by Giants. They should not have gone for that play with TP disadvantage. That means a turret kill. That means a huge lead now for Liquid off of a very silly play. So, I mean, it's like, yes, let's dive in through a minion wave. I wonder if Nautilus going to show up. Oh, he did? How interesting. I guess we're dead then. I mean, you also saw, you had just seen Rain over on the bottom side. Knows right. that he still has Ghost, so he can close that distance. It was stupid in a lot of ways. Uh, oh. They got, they got, they got comfortable. He said, "You know what? Last time we hit Piglet with an arrow, we got a kill. So let's just try that again. That seems to have been uh, yeah. working." Yeah, that worked uh, when the Rek'Sai <laughs> was around. When Mighty Bear was there to hit, land another knockup. And if, if, if Rek'Sai could add her damage in, yes, they would have killed Piglet. And maybe it's a bit different there. Or if Flaxfish was was close enough in range to stop Lorlo's TP, but clearly was not. And if Flaxfish isn't in sight of Lorlo, you can't go for that play. Yeah. Well, it's a poor decision there from the side of Giants. They pay for that one. It's going to be uh, the biggest goal we've, we've seen so far here. About 1.1 thousand now yeah. in favor of TL. Still no kills on the Piglet, but he has those three assists uh, and is clawing his way back in as far as CS goes. So he's getting into a better spot, uh, that is for sure. But still has a ways to go before he's going to become that absolute monster on the vein. Mm -hmm. uh, but Rainover still doing some work, showing up in that bottom lane, helping to get that next kill in. Yeah, and this is really nice. Liquid can now play around their place of power, which suddenly, just because the turret's dead, is actually bot lane now. Once you're at essentially half an item, like, at this stage, Piglet can now 1v1 any of the bot lane members of Giants, which means, and also he runs so fast, like, he will chase upset down the lane and kill him, or he'll chase Hustle down the lane and kill him. And so they have to really play around that. You see Giants immediately swap for the top lane, knowing that's where Vayne and Karma were going. But this is a lane that has both turrets up, so that, that run down kill isn't available anymore, so... Uh, it would have been dangerous if it were bot lane. It's not. It's top lane. I think they can still play the 2 on 2 reasonably well. Yeah, and I mean, if they can get another shove out of lane, that turret in the top lane is already quite low. So that could just lead to a second turret here uh, for TL. So Giant's going to have to collect themselves, come back into the you know the rest of this game, the remainder of this, uh, with a bit of a fresh mentality because getting, uh, getting killed in that bottom lane there for upset might have been a, a bit of a shake-up mentally. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see if they can hold on to it. Of course, these summoners are pretty much all available from the Giants' bottom lane. They didn't really burn them in the death, so uh, there's a decent chance they've actually got a small summoner advantage. Currently, it's three summons to two. Oh, and here they go. And yeah, they're going to be looking for it. So Mighty Bear coming in from the backside to throw out the mantra. Not going to find anything. Piglet will flash away from the arrow. Gets a nice condemn on Mighty Bear, keeping him away. And now Rainover arriving. Flash it. Charging up the, ten, the, ten, uh, the Keeper's Verdict there, but he can't find it because the Ragnarok is up on the Olaf. Rainover going to go ahead and find his third kill of the game. Golden Glue arriving, but takes a good bit of damage here from Knight, who's pinching it from the backside. Now TL corralled in underneath this turret. A little bit susceptible to that poison, but looks like they will be safe. Giants don't want to overcommit and lose even yeah. more. So Flak just going to go down, and TL, they just managed to find another kill. And that felt again like a, a misplay from Giants. They pulled the trigger at the wrong time. They didn't have the wave pushed into the turret yet, so they couldn't actually join with the duo lane. And it's just up to Liquid to kind of press this forward. However, I think, honestly, there's no seats to be had. Knight roaming from the top lane means they're going to be safe. And I don't think Lorlo could really make this happen. So I think it's going to be a forced disengage. However, the top lane turret siege, if they really want, I guess it can continue. We're going to kind of keep trading back and forth with Liquid once again going to be having TP advantage in about 30 seconds. And we might see another sort of lock that a TP play because Liquid just keeps getting the better side of it. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go ahead. They, they're going to peel back. Don't want to stick around uh, for too much longer. No wave available to them at the time, so Lorlo couldn't really get in there. So they'll just go ahead, peel back, be content with taking down the Poppy, and just keep inching these advantages ahead little by little. Let's see what they can do, yeah. 1400 gold lead, definitely solid for Liquid right here, and... Basically, yeah, their, their plan right now is let's play around Lola's Teleport. They, they know very obviously that uh, Flaxus is down, that they can make that, that split push thing happen, and as soon as Lolo can match him in bot lane and he's going there right now, they can, again, look for this interesting flank play, and especially if Rainover can track Mighty Bear at all, they can, they can even make it a 5v3, and that makes it just super simple to get those kills. They've got good vision down this bottom side of the river, so they might be able to... Yeah, they know Spot right now out the, blue shortly. Buff. the blue buff transfer was enough to know. So they know right now that Rek'Sai is bot side. However, Mighty Bear's ults up very, very soon. So it might not mean too much. Because, of course, you can just rotate around as Rek'Sai and just jump to a tunnel. Yeah. Doesn't have too many of those. 
Uh, yeah, they're all not around super the bottom close. side of the map. Just have a couple. Looks like just one in the top side of the jungle there. Yeah, it would take like 10 seconds to get to any team fight. So by that point, Ash would get one shot by just Vayne landing through <laughs> auto attacks. But theoretically, you know, if it takes too long, yes, Mighty Bear will show up. Didn't quite get you there on the gold, but I think Piglet has pulled ahead very slightly. I believe it. He got he got to share some first turret. It's going to yeah. really jettison him upwards. I think he's got it by about 100. So still very close with upset. He's been doing a, a pretty good job despite the you know questionable engage in the bottom lane. Otherwise, he's been doing really well, keeping a, a very steady lead ahead of Piglet. It's interesting that Piglet hasn't recalled in a while. He's been on these items, I think, for several minutes right now. I didn't see if his, his current gold was that high, but I think he could get at least a zeal and cash in a little bit on the previous fight, but maybe he went and uh, bought Zerk Greaves I think that was his last purchase, was okay. the boots. Then, then, then he recalled more recently than I remember seeing, and it's actually not too bad. You don't usually want to float too many thousands of gold once you have an advantage, because otherwise your, your gold lead means nothing, because you didn't buy anything with it. Yeah. You're not applying it. Right. So he should be getting closer and closer to uh, his next item here. Yeah. I wonder if it's going to be Fan Advance or Static Shoot. Uh, those are the two main ones. I guess Rapid Fire Cannon sometimes, but I think it's the worst of the three options. Uh, Phantom Dancer, of course, right for dueling, but I don't know he's, who he's... I guess maybe the Cassiopeia can do a lot of damage to him, so he might want the Phantom Dancer damage reduction for that champion, but Shiv gives him a lot more split push power and, and really fast wave clear. You pretty much one-shot Caspian with an Infinity Edge in a Static Shiv, so it really kills minion waves super, super quick, and let's Piglet get back to team fights more quickly. All right, well, now we can see the Siege coming right back in. Mighty Bear, the only one here to answer at the moment. Hustling, an upset running up the lane, but it's going to be the turret going down, so they can't arrive in time to stop it. Two, ki uh, two turrets on the board now for Team Liquid, and they just keep moving forward with this there advantage. We there we go. That's the tumble we were looking for in the bottom lane. Piglet going to dodge out from that shit into the line. Arrow back and he popped up, though. He'll come through from Piglet, trying to keep his support alive. Upset flashes forward, is able to find the kill. Now Piglet in a bad nice. spot as Knight arrives, gets a petrifying gaze, hits it from the back, but it's enough to slow him up and finalize the kill. So he goes down, two picked up, make that three. His rain over falls, Mighty Bear finding that killing blow. And it's just a three for one in favor of Giants. Excellent trade. And that's what you're expecting out of Knight in the mid lane. 20 CS advantage, gets to the top lane first as well, and makes it a plus two team fight. Absolutely great by him to turn it around. Really, really beautiful stuff, even with the dodge and the Ash Arrow. It, this is all Knight all the time right there. He's just slightly faster. And this fight is, it, it's, you know, not a bad idea for Liquid overall. Just the problem is the fact that Nautilus can never show because he gets canceled away by Poppy. Good play by Flax is there. And the fact that, look, Knight is just there to turn it around. There was not enough damage out of Golden Blue. Rainer gets run down. Yeah, I mean, Golden Blue just not really arriving in time to turn the tide of that fight. Knight popping the Ghost just so he could get there even faster. Golden Blue not using the ultimate uh, to warp his way in. And again, uh, an unsung MVP is Flax just canceling the Lorlo teleport. I'm pretty sure that was him doing it manually, not Lorlo just hitting D again for no reason. Uh, because. The idea was Liquid was going to try to take a 5v4 or 5v3 and turn that around, but Mighty Bear was around and Flax just stopped Lorla. And Knight showed up first. Like all those things, like all those guys made really good choices in being there in time. Yep. So that was that was an excellent play by Giants. I mean, the gold lead uh, now 1.1 thousand, so something that they can easily uh, come back from. And Flax just has the teleport advantage for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, after that cancel coming in from Lorla. So I haven't seen the dragon taken yet. 19 minutes, the Ocean Drake not the. Uh, yeah most enticing of the dragons that could I mean, be there, but... Now that we're about 20 minutes in, it's, it's a lot less valuable. If you can get like a 12-minute ocean break, it's pretty insane for your laning phase. Okay, that doesn't matter anymore. We're outside the laning phase at this point now, so who cares? But yeah, uh, yeah basically the, the winning team was never putting the resources in bot lane, right? Like, turret's always more worthwhile than a drake, so you never take that until you take the first turret, and then of course the winning team is actually really top side because duh, and uh, well, let's get oh, the they're, gonna, they're actually gonna fight over this one. The dragon goes down, rain over is able to find that. Piglet getting jumped on by Flaxus. He's going to try to cut this one back. Keeper's already comes up. Does pop up Piglet briefly. But look at this. He's still just getting these true silver bolt procs off. And Piglet is just starting to rip through this tanky front line of Giants. They have to cut back. Nice the fighting gaze catches Rain over it. He's going to go down. Gets melted out. Hustlin finds the killing blow. And now the rest of TL have to run for the hills. Golden Blue, the only healthy member alongside Lorlo, is at about half HP. They can't wow. find an answering kill. And they lose one just for an Ocean Drake. Liquid blessed to only lose one right there. The the sort of disengaged counter engage from Knight and Hustle was amazing. Petrifying gaze on top of Stranglethorns was absolutely massive. They were stunned, then knocked up or have to run away regardless, and that was a huge turnaround because Flash's teleport did basically nothing other than absorb auto attacks from Piglet and then flash away, barely not dying. But the turnaround was absolutely great. Finally a turret picked up for Giants, huge stuff there. 
So you get to watch this. Yeah, so the TP doesn't really mean much. I want to watch the front line. Watch the Laurel, though, kind of absorbing hits because Flaxus knocks away Goku. That's a good play. And then just Cassiopeia Zyra says, okay, we're all getting stunned. Let's kite back. And then as they go for the chase in, there's Strangle Thorns on everybody. The stun on a rain over. And there's just no chance for Piglet to really get back in there. Piglet and Matt tried to walk in, then just had to immediately flash away, kind of not realizing how bad that fight already was for them. They could have disengaged a bit sooner and saved the summoners, but either way, the double mage turnaround was absolutely great. Yeah, really good stuff. That's going to give Giants the advantage, albeit a very paltry one at the moment. 500 gold in their favor, but a kill advantage and the mid lane turret. Opens. Yeah. So that opens up the map immensely for them. I mean, it's absolutely huge, and I would still consider that an Ocean Drake's worth more than five, six hundred gold in the general sense. I think it's it's still nice to have even 20 minutes in. You, sometimes it just it just matters, um, especially when you have high mana pool champions like this uh, this Rise and this Cassiopeia. That's a lot of mana regen that you're going to have on like almost all the time, and you can oom on these champs. It's actually pretty relevant in some of these cases. Uh, either way, though, uh, great comeback by Giants. Got the right back into this one. I thought they were going to completely lose out mid game power, but that's not the case here anymore. And, you know, Husk is in a good spot. He's got double magic pen. He's going to have the Leandris pretty soon. Um, so the power spikes are kind of here. And, you know, now I've got to think about, okay, what's the next play for these teams? What's what's next on the board? And really the only turret available is mid lane. But it's so hard to siege against Zyra, Ash, and Cassiopeia. Yeah, you can see that instantly. Just four plants popping up. TL not really even going to bother with this one. Just want to try to get some vision down. But this is where it starts becoming a little bit questionable because, you know, it's, where are we going to allocate ourselves? Lorlo still in the bottom lane, Piglet in mid. But with this Ash and so many people hovering around, if that arrow lands, he's probably going to die. So they have to be really careful sticking around. We're also seeing that uh, Knight's sort of choice of play pattern is to split push in the top side. Cassio does have double movement summoners, so it's not the worst thing in the world compared to, I'm thinking of like, you know, a, a Syndra when there's an Echo roaming around the map where you're just going to die if they find you. Um, Cassio has some fighting tools, but you still have the chance of, of Lola getting a good deep teleport. Rainover has enough mobility around the map that he can get one of those wards down to make that TP happen. And Knight has to be very intelligent about, about how he split pushes this. Golden Blue in a similar boat where he's a little bit unsafe as well, especially without having Ghost himself, but at least he has cleanse. Um, but either way, like seeing how much the mages want to split push is going to be very interesting. Knight, will be a bit more aggressive. He's the one pushing first almost always. And sometimes that can be a really big advantage. If, if at one point you choose not to match Knight's split, he gets a turret kill. And if you match him, you gank him, he dies. And so you have a very sort of delicate game with the, with the mage side lane push. Yeah, I mean, in general, I don't. We haven't really seen Golden Blue match Knight in general. Uh, you know, Knight arriving in the top lane, making the the difference in that fight, getting several kills uh, for uh, Giants. Piglet just gonna get booted out of there by that yeah. Keeper's Verdict. Can't get too much damage from the Poppy. In the case of Piglet, like not relying on his reflexes or using reflexes properly to get away, he tumbled really early, and then as soon as he turned on stealth. Plax was like, okay, well, you can't tumble anymore, and you're against a turret, so this is a free ulti hit right there. I don't know if Piglet really could have gotten the kill anyway, but it's just a little weird to just so easily tank that ulti and not try to dodge it. Well, let's see if he's able to turn that, uh, on his head the next time that they face off the 1v1 vein Poppy matchup. And, and I know I'm being, like, hypercritical of Piglet, but Piglet should be the best player in this game. Like, he, he is... Got the best pedigree, and he's got arguably the most skill of any player on the server. And he's got the worst score line, and like that just that shouldn't happen with a player of his caliber. That's why I'm being so harsh on him. He's like, I feel like he should be better than this. Sure, I think it's a decently fair judgment. Hold him to a higher standard, but uh, yeah. yeah, so far it hasn't been good dodge. Oh, all right, almost uh, Matt almost walked into that one, but all right, good reaction there on the tumble. And that's like two or three dodges in a row now for Piglet getting away from arrows. So I'm glad he's only really had that one misplay about that. It's it's much much better now in the game. Got the arrows down pat. Now it's all about the keeper's verdict. Yeah, absolutely. Get those, uh, get those out of the way. <laughs> That's next for him. And he, then he we're good to go. He tanks one and dodges the rest. He just needs to feel it out first. <laughs> well, as you can see, answer uh, the question has been answered. The Infinity Edge with the static shift is the build of choice for him. We'll see where he wants to go next. Whether or not he wants to go for something like a Phantom Dance or really stack on that. Attack speed, maybe the, the right. Blade of the Rune King, which uh, is like a classic staple pick for The it. two uh, that I would choose are Scimitar, or, or sorry, uh, Phantom Dancer and Scimitar. So it looks like he's going Phantom okay. Dancer. Uh, I would not Rapid Fire Cannon, I would definitely not Hurricane, so this looks like Phantom Dancer for him. But uh, there's there's easily a world where you go Quicksilver Sash uh, because of Ash Arrow, because of Zyra Root. There, there's so many good Quicksilver Sash targets that, like, it's... Poppy Stun, Petrified right. Gaze, it, yeah. It's a pretty good choice. Um, now, 
Uh, okay, looks like it's going to be Redemption in for Matt. I was wondering if he's going to go for an early Mikhail's Crucible. I, I know Redemption's super good, but if Piglet's not going to go for QSS himself, you might need that item to get him safe. Not the case here. Matt's going to go Redemption. All right, well, we have a bit of a standoff here. It looks like they're just going to go ahead and peel back. Not going to have too much attention over this vision in the river. Giants pretty much holding the upper hand at the moment. We can see Lurlo coming in with a recall. Both of these top laners do have their teleports available, so if the fight breaks out, it'll be a full-on 5v5 in mid. Matt gets rooted. That's going to be Mighty Bear coming over the wall. Flash away, and arrow goes wide. Yeah, arrow's That's going to be safe, well. but he's low. I feel like as soon as the root hit confirmed from Zyra, you toss the Enchanted Crystal right away. I mean, Unlucky, you know, maybe it was slightly uncool then for a couple more seconds. He used it pretty recently against Piglet. I, I don't quite know, but, you know, oh well. Still got a flash away from Matt. Not a bad thing by, the, by any means. And what I do find interesting is the fact that Mighty Bear went second item, like, immediately after Jungle Enchant, he went for an early, early Titanic Hydra. Now, um, generally speaking, I'd say it's greedy because they have plenty of damage with Cassio, Magic Pen, Syrah, and with Ash, who's doing quite well for herself. Uh, but it does mean that Mighty Bear gets to be the split push if he wants to be. It means they don't have to send Knight to the side. They can let Mighty Bear do that. His wave through is going to be amazingly good with Titanic Hydra. And with, you know, a really high CS numbers, 157, that's not a bad really play style for that champion. Also means he can easily solo Drake's like this. So it, it allows Mighty Bear to make a lot more solo plays, but it makes him a much worse team fighter. Yeah. So it looks like it's just going to be Ocean Drake going over to Giants for free as Mighty Bear solves this out. So one for one. In that regard, and we'll see what we're going to end up with next. And it's just going to be third ocean drink. Okay. So we just get three in a row. So everyone's going to have infinite sustain. That means Lorlo and Flaxish, I think, I'll use literally here, literally can't kill each other in lane. If you disengage for four seconds, your health bar goes back to full. Uh, so it would require significant brain deadness to, to die in this matchup. They're going to continue to be nothing to each other for a I think while. It's, I think it's a pretty fair yeah. uh, statement to say that it'll be uh, an endless fight. Yeah. How exciting! Mm -hmm. I know. I know everybody on uh, in Twitch chat and on, and on Reddit really loves the wet noodle fight in the tank yeah, yeah. in the top lane. So uh, they should be really, really hyped about this. Uh, yeah, I, I've noticed that the spectators have almost never shown us top lane at all, which I think is intelligent because there's really nothing going on there. Yeah. Uh, you can just lot, just look at the minimap in the bottom right corner for the menu waves, and look at the CS numbers in the bottom of the scoreboard. That's pretty much the only things that are happening here. I remember the uh, I think it was Scion versus Malphite fight with Impact versus uh, Quas at Madison Square Garden. Oh, yeah. Uh, last year. But, but Scion just, blasted that fight. It just went on for like three minutes straight, and the camera <laughs> the camera never went off of that, <laughs> that top lane fight because there's nothing else happening. Mm -hmm. And the audience is like cheering every time there's like a small like amount of chip damage that comes through. Yeah. As the as the Malphite health bar slowly de you know, depletes, <laughs> and it's like, we'd like to spend gems to so speed up this health bar. Like, Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the fun of tank meta. Yep. We had all of that in spring split. Mm hmm. Oh, cool. This uh, yeah, Poppy, Poppy Malkai every game. Nice. Yep. I love so, yeah. it. This game has clearly settled down quite a bit. A lot of that is because the next turrets to kill are very hard to kill. Liquid are going to have pretty much no chance to knock down mid outer. And Giants don't want to give that up. Like, they don't want to send the oh, resources yeah. bot lane and trade mid for bot. That's a bad trade for Giants. And so Liquid, they, they can't trade because Giants won't let them. And so they go, all they can do is fight for Dragons. And Giants, now that they have oh, one of control. Go. Thank God we didn't stay on it. <laughs> okay. I was like, wait, 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 what, what am I missing? What am I missing? Oh, nothing. Okay. It's, it's the wet noodle. That's what you're missing. <laughs> All right, we're good. Yeah, they can both shield each other, too. It's, just, it's obnoxious. Uh, yeah, so, it, I mean, it's nice that Mighty Bear is empowered to play solo because it's such a slower game that it, the more I think about it, the better this, this build is because it lets Mighty Bear be a bit more of an X Factor and actually create his own open. Uh-oh. Look at this. I mean, this, the Scuttle Crab is right there for Team TL. A giant is going to go for this TP straight into the pit here from Flaxus. We're looking around the back. The Baron goes low. Rain over. Rain over not able range. to get in there. That's going to be a smite away. Mighty Bear takes it. And now they're TL, they're just going to have to disengage. Flash forward gets a double knock up onto Rain over and Lorlo. So has the Ragnarok so far. Look, we can't re engage this. Giants. They just can't re -engage. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and back off Rain over. He's popping the ghost. He wants to go in. Throughout the Risky. Miasma, he'll get slowed up. Chris Vidic, Verdict yeah. charging up, but. Not gonna find anybody. Neither is the Ash Arrow. I don't know where Rainover goes to there. There's, no, there's, you're, okay. Well, Mighty Bear, the Mighty Bear. he gets popped. Actually, wow. Golden Glue just coming away with the kill. Upset, stunned into the wall, but the Mentor Mighty Gaze is there. Piglet gets wow. absolutely decimated. Rainover having to pop the Ragnarok to sprint out of here. Just gonna be throwing Underthrones from the backside. Actually, no upset. upset. Flashing forward, going full on aggression with the Ash. Gets the kill onto Rainover. A two oh, for one beautiful. so far. Stunned into the wall from the Poppy. Matt looking like he might go down. Lorlo falling suit. Golden Glue, can he clean up on the backside? Members of Giants are pretty low other than the Poppy. 
but he needs to find a way in, and this Cassiopeia is just not allowing it. That's a four for one for Giants plus the Baron, and they're going to be knocking down some turrets, if not the inhibitor in the mid lane. Knight is a freaking superhero. He got them the kill on Piglet. Piglet could not dodge away from the Petrifying Gaze. This is what you get for not buying Clips over Sash or Mikhail's Crucible. Set up that kill, and then the flash forward from Upset was just so good. So Mighty Bear's greedy build gets punished here. Right, he's going to walk in. Titanic Hydra second means he's squishy. They get all the burst damage all at once. Nicely done. Okay, congratulations. And that stun on Upset is great, but Piglet wants to get the auto attack, and by doing that, lines up with a stun. He's in turret range as well, so invisibility means nothing. And at this point, this is a pretty easy fight to chase in. Upset with Hurricane just does a million damage. He can lifesteal tank the Nautilus. There's no chance there. And Knight nearly did get picked off by Golden Glue's Rise, but kited it out well enough to not get killed. And yeah, Golden Glue just was not a big enough factor there. Yeah. And just, you know, over-aggressive play from TL. They got that pick on a Mighty Bear. It was a good dredge line. Mm -hmm. But then they want to overcommit and then start fighting a Baron Empowered team underneath their turret right. against a Cassiopeia that still has Petrifying Gaze. They had all their cooldowns. They had to pop none of them to secure that Baron. Yep. And it's another one where it's, it's Piglet's fault. It's Piglet's fault for, for face taking a Cassie ult. He's better. I mean, you should just get a quick of a Sash. Just like B double if you buy QSS third item on Vayne every single game. It's just the safer play. And he didn't need Phantom Dance to win that fight, but QSS, they would have probably gotten the turret in another kill or two. Well, rough stuff from TL, and they started to kind of dig themselves into a hole here. Just under 4,000 gold down, two turrets up in favor of Giants. Even in Dragons, but that's yeah. only no, uh, they, the slightest of reprieves here. They can keep getting a lot more, and this is actually a state where Ocean Drake actually really helps you because Baron doesn't give you regen anymore, hasn't for several years, but you want to do these long stage sieges. If you have to recall, you lose 30 seconds of, of Baron buff, you lose one seventh of the buff, so yep. the longer you stay out, the more turrets you kill. Bot lane tier 2 is going to be free, and any damage they take is going to be regen back up. So none of this poke's gonna matter for Liquid at all. Yep. You can see Giants just forcing their way in, taking out that tier two. Don't even suffer much damage. Upset took a little bit, but they just couldn't clear out the wave fast enough. They don't have uh, that much reliable wave clear to get through Baron empowered minions. Yeah, 13,000 gold on the two major carries. Knight and Upset both about 2,000 gold up. Or, okay, 1,300 up over their opposite member. That's still a very big deal. Upset actually even now going in for some armor penetration. The Last Whisper is in the build. The Vamps have to make sure he's safe. I mean, he is going to cut through the frontliners now. It's not going to be difficult for him. It's really interesting. Piglet opted to go in for the Hex Drinker instead of the QSS. That's stupid. That, that's honestly stupid. Like, he really, really, really should go for Silver Sash. He died because he got stunned, not because he didn't have the Magic Shield. I don't know. This is, this is silly. We'll have to get it soon if they want to have any opportunity to get back into this game. TL definitely going to be playing from the back foot now. Still pushing up into this mid. But they just, they can't stick around. Nope. Yeah, right now Liquid are definitely on the back foot. They, ha they have to play defense. And the thing is, the reason I like Giants comp a bit more from champs is because Giants have ways of engaging fights. Liquid have to really, really force hard. They have to force through a Cassia and a Siren. It's rough. They have to walk in there. So there's a hook on a Black Swift the tank. Forcing over an Ocean Drake. Not sure if that's the smartest idea. Rain over popping the Ragnarok. Mighty Bears goes low, but he gets that massive shield coming through. Golden Blue and Lorlo chunk down to half. Lorlo just getting shredded by Knight, who is pushing for it fearlessly on this Cassia up here. The Pets Fighting Gaze doesn't find anybody. They're going to go ahead and pop that GA in. And now TL is just absolutely getting shredded. Piglet just trying to do what he can from the back line. But he just can't get in there to deal damage to the, the damaging members of Giants. Knight and Upset still healthy as hell. And now they're going to TP down to the bottom lane and knock down this inhibitor. Piglet's all by himself for the next 40 seconds. This really could be game. Beautiful play by Giants. Piglet had kited the fight as well as he could. But the fact that Knight and the rest of the team could just jump back in on the rest of Liquid and just take oh, sort of a 4v3. Yeah, I they mean, find it. There it is, the flash forward. Piglet goes down, and that's going to be game. Giants, beautiful. In 35 minutes, taking down Team Liquid, who had the upper hand for yes. a while in the mid game. Giants yep. with a massive comeback. Very, Take them out. Very well played game by Giants. They turned around in the mid game. Some really smart plays by them by the mid to late game. Knight was amazing. Upset honestly looked very, very good in his first game on the team as well. Impressed with the new Giants lineup. Very impressed by them, and they're now going to face...